Hey YouTubers, this is my follow-up on my clutch situation on the BMW and uh, Yeah, not my favorite thing to work on And I'm sorry. I didn't do a full-out video vlog of everything step by step. I figured I'd throw out some tips out there anyway so Probably the biggest mistake I did is I removed the complete bracket for this all the foot pegs and everything and I had to take the master cylinder you know for the brakes everything had to come off of it and putting it all back on took way more time than it had to I did the same thing on the other side I actually removed the shift lever linkage from that plate and took it right off to get more access but in hindsight these could just be taken off that's not a bolt holding on that's your fill but these bolts could be just taken off and swung up with the trellis as you bring it up and then that would be a little bit less work I would have had to done there some things I would definitely invest in that could make your life a little easier is a little crank up jack from a car I bought that on eBay or something for it was 15 or 20 bucks I could have just stole my wife's out of her car she never would have noticed it was gone I invested in some lighting because it was very dark in here and that's no fun. A good climber manual because I've watched them. I've got to give a little shout out to Chris Harris online. Great guy. He's got a lot of info on these beamers and the oil heads. And climber, you know, is a good resource to flip back to to remind yourself about, oh yeah, this, that, and this, taking it off. And that's exactly what happens here. This whole trellis. I just took a red ratchet strap, strapped it to the handlebars to hold it up out of the way for a while. And I was able to get access to this ugly, disgusting, have no idea how this got so bad. It blows my mind. It's sealed in the back of the transmission with a gasket. And I, this thing's totally roached out. I don't understand how must have got a lot of water and a fluid or something somehow. It hasn't been flushed in a thousand years. I don't know. I originally did not lift the rear trellis off of this to get this out and in. I tried to do it orthoscopically and ended up throwing out my back, basically. It worked. I got it in there, but I was not able to get a Allen wrench on the banjo bolts in order to get enough to get them quite tight enough on there and I tried doing some tricks to get it in there and out of there and nothing really ever worked so I said you know the really only way I'm going to do this right is to lift the trellis get it all up and put it on the correct way but that is that and I went out I figured oh if I got the tank off don't know how old that battery that was in here was so I got a new battery to throw in here and that's pretty much the end of it. It actually now is freed up. And I think I'm gonna give it one more good bleed job and I'm still contemplating. I cleaned this out really well. And you know, after you know, just actuating this thing just over and over and over again to see how, you know, pumping it, I've noticed there's some more debris coming up out of here which tells me that the seals inside are starting to rot out so that's probably going to be my next project to do and completely tie this whole clutch disaster up so I don't have to deal with any more headaches I think I found that rebuild kit on Beamer Boneyard for it wasn't it was way more expensive than I thought it was going to be it was like 80 or 90 bucks but I think I'm going to go ahead and do that before spring comes and get this completely 100% done and I'll reflush the whole system back out again. But uh, yeah, I had to drop the exhaust completely. The one thing I can tell you is this is the connection for the O2 sensor. If you just cut these two zip ties and there's a little clip that holds so if you just follow the map it'll follow that wire to a little golden trail to yeah yellow brick road there there's a little clip on the side of the tranny you can pop that off transmission sorry 
you can pop that wire off and you can slide this whole harness down far enough so that you can swing the exhaust off without taking the O2 sensor completely off. That's another little tip I can give you. These just disconnect and this tube just slides up into the box. So it is, I mean, the bike is partially designed for this to happen, but man, this is, <laughs> I am still not impressed with if, I mean, if they think this is acceptable, you know, disassembling your whole bike just to get to the, a regularly maintenance item, you know, that you shouldn't have to split this bike in half. I mean, I'm going to throw a challenge out to those engineers at BMW and say, yeah, you can come up with something way better than what you did. This is horrible. I have not seen anything as a bigger disaster. It took more time to do such a simple little thing. But that's the end of that rant. I got the tank over there. There is nice quick disconnects that have ball valves on them, check valves, so that when you disconnect the fuel, that's the other thing. I had just filled up this tank when everything broke down on me. Um, so I still have five gallons of fuel in there. But the worst is behind me right now. Literally all I have to do is put the battery back on. There's, a, I guess, a, a little step of the first time you power this thing up, you have to recalibrate your throttle position sensors and stuff like that. And I should be back on the road. Hopefully, the first time we get a nice 40 or 50 degree day. Any questions, shoot them at me. I'll be happy to give you any suggestions, tips, or, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, vote of confidence that you can do this. If you got any, you got a, you got a box of tools. Oh, the other thing you'd probably want to get yourself is a decent torque wrench because everything has a torque spec on this bike. And, yeah, you just want to follow along with the book because... If it calls for 30 newton meters, it's got 30 newton meters on it. If it's got 50, the rear wheel gets 105 newton meters. I don't want, you know, <laughs> I just follow along with the book. Go with what it says. Even though 30 newton meters on the brake caliper seems kind of like, eesh, not tight enough. But anyway, it's back together partially. A couple more plastic pieces and a battery, and we'll be back on the road. Have a good one, YouTube. Take it easy. Thank you.